here we are, folks. Uh, we're in the park again. Listen to the music. Uh, it's pretty nice, huh? Uh, I am sitting here. Uh, I just took a nice little mile walk so far, and I still have to get home. But uh, I don't know. I just I, I was thinking of walking along. I said I really have something to say, and I think it's important for me to say. You know, over the last couple of days, I've had some arguments with certain people over Andrew Cuomo. And I want to explain why I come to the position that I do and the position really that I have on his case and a lot of other cases. When I was a kid, I went to the House on American Activities Subcommittee. Now, I was only about 15 at the time, and my father was going down there to protest. And while he was protesting, I just walked up the stairs to the San Francisco City Hall, walked up to, I think it was the second floor where these hearings were being held, and walked right in. I guess everybody felt it was really cute that a kid came by. And in a matter of minutes, I saw my favorite morning show host. He used to do just this rather innocuous program about San Francisco, California, and the history of California, and these are just stories called San Francisco Stories. And he told those every day. And all of a sudden, he was asked by this committee, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And I went, well, what's he going to do? What's he going to say? And he says, I refuse to testify on the rights that it might tend to incriminate. And he stopped, didn't talk, answer any more questions. The next morning, I tune in to my favorite morning show, and it stopped there. And this guy never worked again in radio. Well, that had a great effect on me, great effect on me, because it, it, it kind of informed my politics for the rest of my life. I saw a man without proof of anything that he had done wrong, simply ruined for the rest of his life because he asserted his constitutional rights. And that affected my thinking on most things. And the thing it infected it most on was having a, uh, be, being found guilty without any benefit of trial or even evidence being presented or you being able to defend yourself not that you should have to defend yourself you know when you're accused of something in this society in this country you don't have to defend yourself the other person has to prove you did what they said you did so you the burden of proof should not be upon you but anyway i get ahead of myself a few years later uh, i found myself at the olympics this is topical, the Winter Olympics in Lillehammer. And I was there with my, uh, my uh, newswoman, Lori Thompson. And uh, earlier in the day when we first got there, we had some real problems. We couldn't find our luggage. And when I couldn't find my luggage, the authorities uh, in, uh, 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 in Norway uh, decided that, well, I needed to have my rectum checked. Yeah, they took me in, they gave me a full body and cavity search, and then they found my stuff. Well, by that time, I was fit to be tied. I mean, I was just, you know, in a, in a snit. But, you know, the Norwegian authorities apologized, and so we went, uh, but I was just agitated, really agitated. So that night, uh, Lori and I go to our rooms, which are in this... Uh, uh, this apartment house. She had a room that she was sharing with this woman, and I had a room I don't think I was sharing with anybody. I might have been by myself or with some other guy. And uh, finally, I got mad at Lori for something because she hadn't defended me against this woman she was with or something like that. But anyway, we were out in front of the apartment, her apartment, and I said, you know, this makes me so damn mad, and I shouted at her. And uh, one of the few times I ever shouted at Lori. But you got to realize I was upset from the events earlier on in the day. And I just slapped my hands together. You know, like, hey, you know, you could have defended me in there. Slap my hands. The next day I go in to do my show. And the Coca-Cola cops 
are there waiting for me. I say the Coca-Cola cops because they actually did have a security division. And they take me down to the basement of this building. And they, I said, am I free to go? And they said, no, you can't go anywhere till we found out what happened last night. I said, well, what do you think happened last night? He said, we've been told that you hit Lori Thompson. Well, that's ridiculous. I didn't hit Lori Thompson. I would never hit Lori Thompson. I don't hit women. And they said, well, that's not what we've heard because this woman who was the roommate said that she heard slap and that I hit Lori. Lori went back in, and of course she could have asked him, did he hit you or anything? Um, and she may have, and Lori may have said no. But anyway, they said, we're not letting you go anywhere until Lori Thompson gets in here, and we can find out what happened last night. And I said, so I'm being held against my will. And he said, yes. So I sat there, and I was, I was, you know, it's terrible being accused of something, especially when you didn't do it. And I, uh, I, I sat there. Finally, Lori Thompson showed up, and they took her into another room, and they said, did he hit you last night? And she said, Alex would never hit a woman. Alex is one of the kindest, gentlest people I know. Of course not. He didn't hit me. Well, it turned out this woman was lying, the other woman, because she just didn't like me, probably didn't like men in general. And... Uh, so ultimately, the person who got sent home and got thrown out of the Olympics was that woman and not me. But for a short time there, I knew what it was like to be accused of something you didn't do and having no real defense against it except your own word. Finally, Lori showed up and, and made everything right. So that, in a large way, informed a lot of the feelings I have about what's going on today. And what's going on today is absolutely disgusting. I, you know, look, I don't mind if you want to throw Bill Cosby in jail. He had a trial. He lost. He went to jail. Okay. I don't care if Weinstein gets thrown in jail. He had a trial. People brought up, uh, he brought up his defense. They brought up their allegations. He went to jail. But there are a lot of people who haven't gone to jail who have only been accused and have lost their careers because they are just being accused. It's always been my feeling, in the true fairness of our democracy, that if you're accused of something, you better be proven guilty before we all assume you are guilty. Which brings us around to my feelings about Andrew Cuomo. I don't know what he did or didn't do. I've seen some of the proof he has. I've seen some of the allegations they have. And I just think it's too early for us to ask him to quit being governor simply because he's been accused of something. But there's been no trial in a court of law, no trial at all in a court of law. And uh, it was just this investigative committee, which uh, there's some questions as to their legitimacy and to whether they did due diligence in this whole case. But the point is, he should not be asked to leave by anybody. I mean, what kind of democracy is Chuck Schumer living in or Kirsten Gillibrand living in that they can suddenly say to somebody, well, you've been accused, therefore you better leave office because you've got to be guilty. That's pretty much their attitude. They're not Americans. They're not constitutionalists. They don't believe in anything because if they believed in anything, they would say, Let's wait until we see what happens in a court of law and the people actually have to be put under oath, okay, to tell the truth. Will it then all come out and what will be the preponderance of the evidence? But you don't ask him to resign now, but yet they all line up doing it. Biden lined up doing it, Gillibrand, Schumer, and all those other assholes. And I'm saying, yeah, our president in this case is an asshole. This is not the American way. Yes. Let's just say for a moment Andrew Cuomo is guilty as sin of everything that he's being uh, accused of. He's simply being accused. It hasn't been proven yet. And he should not have to leave office. Now, my feeling is informed by all those other incidents I talked about in my lifetime that have really, really bothered me. 
And I've always felt that we live in a democracy where fairness should rule supreme. And if it doesn't, then we've lost it. And in this case, we're losing our democracy. I see people on TV, like on Meet the Press, going, well, we all know he's guilty, and uh, he should get out, and he should leave, and blah, blah, blah. No, he shouldn't do anything. He should be allowed to defend himself in a court of law or before some kind of a committee. But he hasn't even put his defense out there, although his lawyers have, and they've got a pretty snappy defense. But nobody seems to mention that either. All I'm saying is I'm not, it's not that I'm standing up for Andrew Cuomo. If he did what they say he did, well, I think they're, they're misdemeanors at best, okay? Even a grabbing a woman's breast is a misdemeanor. It's, not a, it's criminal, but it's a misdemeanor. Uh, but at, at best, they're all misdemeanors. And at, at best, most of these situations were just, well, he said to me, nice dress today. You know, and I took that, and it, it ruined me for the rest of my life. But the point, the point I'm making, I think you know what I'm making, is we, we should not convict people ahead of time. I talk about my friend Louis C.K., who really can't work as a comic today or make movies like he wants to make. Why? Because he simply was accused of doing something. He did finally admit to it. We could get into that. But I don't think that he deserved to not be able to work for the rest of his life. And take a look at Woody Allen. Woody Allen, tell me any legal organization, any, any body of law that has come along and charged him with rape or with the molestation of his step, of his daughter. Tell me where there, there's been that. No, there have been investigations and it came to nothing, okay? And now Mia Farrow wants to get even and she sends her little toady boy out, uh, Ronan Farrow, to go do her dirty work. But nobody's accused Woody of anything. Well, what's the result? Because of this, Woody has a hard time getting financing for his next movie. And Woody has a hard time getting actors who will work with him because they all believe he's guilty too, even though he states He's not guilty, and no one has ever proved him guilty. So what kind of democracy do we live in when we live under this kind of draconian law where if you're just simply accused of something, you're guilty? It's pathetic. It is just absolutely pathetic, and it's horrible. And it, you know, all I'm asking for is fair. I'm not defending Andrew Cuomo. I'm standing up for his rights. And my rights, and your rights, and I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. <laughs> I'm in the park, and hmm, the pollen is just killing me. Anyway, I just want to get that off my chest. But, you know, I'm not defending Andrew Cuomo. That's not the point of this. The point is, I'm defending our democracy and the way we look at things, and innocence until proven guilty. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> well, I better. Eh. I guess that's God's way of telling me I better bring this to a close. Anyway, uh, thank you. I uh, hope you understand what I was trying to say. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you later.